Hey guys, what's going on? This video is going to be a very quick demo of my product Deptone, which just received a big update that has some very cool features that I'm excited to show you about. So I'm gonna show you how to take your graphic from something like this to something like this using Deptone. Let's get started. So you can see when I zoom in here, this is all pixel by pixel. There are no transparencies in here. It's all hard edges and that makes it super convenient and easy for us to color separate out for screen print. And that is only a byproduct of it just being a really fucking cool effect. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I did this. I'm gonna delete all these layers here. And this is what you'll see when you first open the template. So this is just the sample artwork that I put in here. We're just gonna jump right into this. So I want that image of Robert Patterson back in here so we can do the depth tone action on that image. All you have to do to get whatever image or whatever you want in here is open up the smart object here by double clicking on the artwork layer thumbnail. We'll double click on that. And now we're in the smart object. And here you can drag and drop in any image that you want. You can composite your artwork in here. And then once you save this file, those changes will be committed to the depth tone template and these effects will take place. So I want that image of Robert Pattinson in here, which I conveniently dragged in here earlier. So this is the image or the sample image that I'm going to be displaying this effect on and all I did was drag and drop this into my depth tone artwork file. You want to make sure that it's in the folder that says place art in here. And from here we can choose the textures and kind of grain or halftone pattern that we want. So right now it has the halftone pattern on which is a really cool effect. I'll show you right now just by saving this. But if you remember correctly I originally had the grain pattern on this and that's what I'm going to be displaying. Let's check out what this halftone looks like before we do that. So we can see that that was just a drag and drop of that image into the smart object. And this is the beautiful result that pops out just when we save that smart object. So we see how the template is working here. It's half toning all the tonal levels of this image. And in these panels, you can change the colors as well as the spread of those colors or the intensity of them. So if I wanted to turn the midtones up, I would go into threshold values here and I'll mess with that. But that's something I'm gonna do later. I wanna change this back to grain. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my artwork folder here. And I'll change this to grain. If I wanted, I could take these textures off or apply different textures but I like how they look, so I'm gonna leave them in here. And I'm just going to save my small object like this. And now you can see we got that grain effect back in this image. Um, I do think the colors are a little harsh, so I'm gonna go ahead and edit those just by opening up the color fill layers over here and finding something that I think works a little bit better. So I'll go more for a salmon-ish color on the red here. And then the mid-tones, I'll choose something less vibrant. We'll go for like a lighter, a lighter orange or yellow. Something like that. And the highlights I think are fine. And we're gonna play around with this and make sure everything looks just right. Maybe these shadows are a bit too harsh on this as well in terms of their intensity. So we can go into the shadows folder here, go into the threshold value and play with that until we think it looks just right. So right about here I'm thinking looks pretty damn good. All right, cool. So now I wanna add those other color hues that we saw in the original example where the background was kind of bluish and his shirt over here was pink. And we could do that using the new update of depth tone which includes these actions over here which you can see on the left hand side so open up your actions panel i'm sure you know it's in your window and then actions that you can install the actions that come with depth tone if you're going to this little dialogue here and clicking load actions but anyway we have these actions here and we want to introduce that blue background in here that was in the original artwork so here's what we'll do we want to use this create new hue action and we're going to choose the gray one of course because we're using grain on our image here and to use this all we have to do is go and click on our artwork small object down here make sure you have that selected and then we'll just run the action but quickly before that make sure when you run the action you don't have anything on top of this template group here and also make sure that the layer mask on this template group is still there and then it's empty but anyway we're going to click on our artwork layer down here and we'll just click play on this create new hue action. So I recommend you read this, obviously. That's why I wrote it. I'm not going to read it because I'm trying to breeze past this in this quick demo. But definitely go ahead and read these dialogues so that you know what you're doing. I'm going to just press continue here. And now I'm prompted with this color range dialogue to choose whatever color or new hue that I want to create in our depth toned artwork. So I actually used this photo as the example artwork when I was making these actions. So by default, this sort of a blue is selected. But if you want to select a different color, say the skin tones, then you would just use the color picker here and click on wherever the skin tones are. And I recommend you use the additive color picker here so that you can click on multiple places to gain more information about the color. Now, of course, I want that blue, so that's what I'm going to pick. 
So I'm going to pick on this blue over here in the background and I'll click on the out of the brush to get a little bit more information about those blues just by clicking around here. That looks fine. So I'm going to click OK. And now it's going to layer mask the template to our selection. And it's also going to dither it using the pattern we choose, which I, of course, am choosing grain. And here I'm asked to set the size of the grain which I'm just going to keep at 100 because I'm using the default grain size in the template. So I'll press OK here. And you'll see that it's just going to automatically create a mask on a new template. I'll press continue here. And we can see we now have two templates, the original and a new one that says alternate hue. And the layer mask of this template includes the blues that we just selected out, but it's dithered using the grain pattern that I chose in the action. So now if I go inside this template, I can choose whatever colors I want and it's only going to affect that part of the template because it is layer masked. So pretty cool stuff. Now I'm changing this to a blue and it's only affecting the background. And I can mess with all of the other colors here as well. So I'll change the mid-tone color as well and the highlights color too. These aren't really shown as much in the image because I don't think the background kind of has those values in it. But if I wanted to, I could play with the intensity levels of these, but I'm not going to. I think it looks fine just like this. Maybe I'll change this blue to be a bit lighter. And that's looking real good to me. And just like that, I added a whole new color hue to this depth tone artwork and it looks really good. And I want to do a similar thing for his shirt right here, which you remember in the original example, I had it sort of pinkish and his shirt was masked out, which I can do using the same create new hue action if I wanted, but I want to display what these other actions do. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate one of these templates here. I'll duplicate the top template and I'll just empty that layer mask by filling it with white and then I'll invert it using command I. So now we have an empty layer mask here, completely black. And I wanna set this template to the color that I want the shirt to be. So to actually see what we're doing, I actually have to turn the layer mask back to white or I can just turn it off by shift clicking on the layer mask. And that will pretty much make this layer mask inept. And now this template is taking over the whole image and I can choose whatever color I want here. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose whatever colors that I want for the shirt. I think I had it as like sort of a reddish pink before, which I thought looked nice. So I'll bring that back. Maybe even like an orange. I think I'll do an orange just for some variety here. So I'll change all these colors to my liking. I'll do a yellow for the midtones and the highlights. I'll just leave as is. And this is the color that I want the shirt. Obviously not the whole image. So what I want to do is paint in this layer mask where I want it to be. So I'll take a soft brush here or whatever. It doesn't matter. You can even pen tool out the selection that you want but I think a soft brush is just the easiest way to do this. And it's a great way for me to explain how this actually works. So I'm gonna just take my soft brush here and brush in the part that I want to be orange. So that will be around his shirt area. I'll just brush that in using my soft brush. And you can see that when I zoom in, it is not fully dithered. There are transparencies in here. And if I go to the layer mask, you can see that even better that this layer mask is not dithered like the other one is. So you see that this layer mask with the background completely dithered using our grain dither pattern. So there's no transparencies in here and we can select this for screen print. But for this template layer mask, we cannot because we're using a soft brush and we have these soft edges here. So how we can fix that is just by using these other actions that I included in the action pack called the halftone and grain layer mask. And what this will do is, you guessed it, it's going to either halftone or grain your layer mask. So I'm gonna use the grain action on this layer mask. And one thing you wanna do, this is you have to do this or else this won't work, is you have to close the group that you're working on. So make sure that the group is closed and then you can go and click on the layer mask of that group and now run any of these actions. I'm using the grain pattern here, so I'm obviously going to run the grain layer mask action. And I'll just click play on this while having the layer mask selected and the group closed. Make sure that group is closed, very important. I'll play this action and obviously you gotta read these. It says, please make sure the group is closed. So I'll press continue because my group is closed. And now we see that it's dithering these, or it's dithering that layer mask using the grain pattern that we chose. So I'm gonna press continue. And here I can choose the size of the grain if I want. I'm gonna keep it at 100 because that is the default. I'll press okay on this. And now we can see that the action is complete and the layer mask is dithered with no transparency. So if I go into the layer mask here, we can see that it is fully grained out. And if I zoom in, there's no transparencies or soft edges and pixels here. It is all hard pixels. And that just makes this absolutely perfect for screen print and whatnot. And I did get kind of a sloppy selection here. So if you see, I zoom in here, some of these soft brush edges are faded out into the background, which I think actually kind of looks cool. But let's say you're not happy with your layer mask and you want to redo it or you want to paint on top of it and just basically, you know, adjust it. You could take your soft brush again or whatever brush, of course, 
and then just brush over it with that soft brush. And of course, now it is no longer dithered. So if I check the layer mask, we have those transparencies. But all you would have to do is run the action again, and it's going to dither that um, perfectly fine. So I'll run the action again real quick. I'll press continue on this, press OK, run through it. Boom. Now we've got our adjusted layer mask also completely dithered. And you can do that as many times as you want. So cool. Now we have this depth tone image with our multiple hues in here. We have, of course, the skin tones, the blue background, and the orange sweater here. I mean, it's looking great. And we've basically learned that you can create multiple hues in our artwork with depth tone by two different methods. So like I said, you can either use the create new hue action, which I demoed earlier, which is where you, you use color range to select out the hue in your image that you want to mask the template to. Or you could just duplicate your template and set it to the colors that you like for a specific object and then mask that template and then run one of these grand or halftone layer mask actions on that layer mask so that it dithers that mask to be pixel perfect, no transparencies, and therefore perfect for screen print. So again, if I zoom in here, it looks beautiful, but it's also perfectly dithered with no transparencies, which is just gorgeous and extremely, extremely convenient for merchandise designers. This is once again, an absolute game changer. I said that about the original version of Deathtone, but with this update, it's just even more unbelievable. And you have so much more power now compared to the first version of Deathtone. So yeah, absolute game changer for merchandise designers. Definitely want this in your toolbox. You can get this at DuranSupply.com. This is Deptone and it is your new secret weapon. That's about it for this demo. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you learned something about Deptone and how to use it to your advantage in creating multiple color hues and just creating a beautiful masterpiece of grain and halftone in your artworks. Thank you guys for watching and supporting as always. Don't forget to subscribe for more graphic design content and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.